today about uh, Tupac and Snoop. And if Tupac and Snoop were so close, why didn't Snoop drop everything and go rushing to the hospital to come see his buddy in the hospital? Day one, day two, day three even. Why is Snoop one of the last people to visit Tupac when he's alive? Why? If they're so close, if they're such good friends, if they were such good buddies, and if Snoop really wanted to be the person to induct Tupac into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, why didn't he go visit him sooner? I mean, it's just a question that we need to ask. So we have the first press conference that says that Tupac's not even in cr critical condition. And then the doctor comes out and he says that Tupac is expected to recover. And think about the liability issues of saying that a celebrity is expected to recover and then that uh, celebrity ends up dying. I mean, they don't come out and say somebody's expected to recover unless they're pretty certain that the celebrity is going to recover. And so that's another thing that tells us that Tupac was most likely finished off in the hospital. Now, a few doctors that I've spoken to talk about how easy it is to kill somebody while they're in the hospital. I mean, that IV drip is going directly into the bloodstream. Getting any kind of a toxin into that IV is fairly easy. Anybody that knows their way around a hospital room could easily do that. An overdose of oxytocin could easily cause a heart attack. And so it would have been fairly simple to kill Tupac in that hospital. And you think about the distraction that happened, Snoop shows up, we need 10 seconds to get in that hospital room and create uh, you know, some kind of a problem with Tupac. And we look at the proficiency of this group with poisons. I mean, look at the Harry O thing that's in Lydia Harris's documentary where Kenner shows up and gives him a 7-up and he gets deathly ill from that. And look at the number of people that have had heart attacks and have died around this case. There are numerous people that have died of heart attacks. Russell Poole died of a heart attack. Afini Shakur died of a heart attack. Uh, Nate Dogg died of a stroke. Um, and Tupac dies of a heart attack. And he has three heart attacks. They revive him three times and then finally Afini says, pull the plug, let him go. And they let him go. That's how Tupac dies. Snoop Dogg says he wanted to see his homie. He says he whispered into Tupac's ear and he felt like he got it. Uh, you know, we heard got him come over the radio and then we heard that Tupac was whispered to by Snoop who said he got it. I wonder what that really means. Yo-Yo said that he knew who shot him. She was convinced that Tupac knew who shot him. And if that was the case and he was going to come out of this coma and he was going to start pointing fingers and going after people, everybody that was involved wanted him dead. No question about it. And Nate Dogg was following behind Tupac. Nate Dogg was in the car. Nate Dogg is related to uh, Little Half Dead. Little Half Dead's birthday happens to be the 13th. Can you imagine if Little Half Dead is the shooter? What a great birthday present this was for Little Half Dead to see Tupac Shakur die on his birthday. Why is it that the Compton PD always celebrates their reunion on the 13th of September? They have a reunion for the Compton police. They celebrate the, uh, their reunion on the 13th of September in Las Vegas usually. Nate Dogg was following behind. He said to Daz that Tupac and Suge were dead. We hear coming over Reggie Wright's radio, Michael Moore sitting next to him, here's got him. Doesn't that sound familiar? It sounds like the same story. Got him means Tupac and Suge are dead. Um means more than one. That means Tupac and Suge. They were both targets that night. Not one being a target, both of them being a target. Got him 
refers to Tupac and Shook were both dead. And that's exactly what Nate Dog tells Daz. He tells Daz, Tupac and Suge are dead. Eyewitnesses to the crime say that the shooter was very deliberate in his aim. He knew he was going after. Uh, Yakfula says it was jealousy, that, uh, that he could tell that it was a, a jealousy motive for the shooter. Uh, both Frank Alexander and Yagfula talk about a dark black arm. Little Half Dead had a dark black arm. And Little Half Dead is dark black. And, and that, that fits with the eyewitness statements that we had that night. Uh, there were death threats that Tupac received while he was in the hospital. And those death threats sent the family members out to the outer perimeters guarding against an attack from outside while the attack was actually going on on the inside. Frank Alexander gets the phone call. He's called away. His phone is blown up by Reggie Wright Jr. There's 50 phone calls. Got to get over here. Big meeting over at Shug's. And that's when Snoop shows up after Frank Alexander skips out. Gobi mentions that hardly anybody was watching Tupac. Gobi also mentions that Reggie Wright Jr. was at the hospital. And was he at the hospital right when that all happened? No, he was at Shug's waiting for Frank Alexander, blowing up Frank Alexander's phone, clearing the way for something to happen to Tupac. Danny Boy sings A Change Is Gonna Come and there's tears that stream down Tupac's face at hearing this song. So Tupac, even though he was unconscious, kind of had some kind of a knowledge of what was actually happening in the room. And when Snoop was there, bed shaking, the whole thing, he wanted to get out of there and he couldn't get out of there. He was powerless to actually get himself out of the hospital. And we know he checked himself out of the hospital in the quad uh, shooting. Something else very strange. The coroner's office is waiting for Tupac's autopsy. The vehicle is idling inside a warehouse portion where the shipping and receiving dock is at the hospital. The coroner's vehicle is idling, waiting for Tupac to die. His body is immediately wheeled out and taken to the coroner's where he's rushed through his autopsy. Doesn't anybody find that strange? That the coroner's vehicle is waiting? Come on, that's very strange. So there's three different stories about when Snoop found out Tupac died. He says he found out with David Aaron in the studio. He says he found out uh, while he was on the road. And he says he had a violent reaction when Tupac died, he was there. Which is it, Snoop? Why is there three different stories? Snoop was leaving Death Row Records. He, he tried to sign with Russell Simmons. Suge put an end to that. Then he tried to leave and go to Warner's. Suge put an end to that. Now, if there's somebody who's stopping you from doing something that you want to do. He's an obstacle and he's in the way. You got to remove the obstacle. Doesn't it make sense that they wanted to take out Suge Knight? And there was this huge rivalry with Tupac. Now you're going to have Tupac and Suge both the car at the same time in the crosshairs. It makes sense that you take out Suge and Tupac that night. Trey D says, that Snoop and his bodyguard went up to see Tupac. Okay, well, who was his bodyguard? His bodyguard is Kevin Gaines. Who's Kevin Gaines? He's an LAPD officer dating Sharitha Knight, and he's in Las Vegas from two days before the, the Tupac shooting until two days after Tupac dies. Doesn't that sound like somebody who's planning things and somebody who's cleaning up the mess afterwards? two days before to two days after. That brings in LAPD. He was there on special assignment with two other LAPD officers. That means Sharitha probably knew something about this, probably was involved. We find out that from the patents. The patents are the ones that tell us Sharitha was involved. From the patents, confession letter, and their statements, we find out that David Kenner went to the meeting that was disguised as a gang summit when they were going to get permission to take out Suge and Tupac. And so David Kenner has this kind of strange relationship with the gangs where he's actually allowed to show up at their meetings. David Kenner's at a gang summit in Cabo 
where there's a where there's people getting jumped into the gang. Isn't that kind of strange that David Kenner would be allowed to be there at that meeting? And doesn't that corroborate the fact that David Kenner is there with Reggie Wright Jr. getting permission to kill Tupac and Suge? Uh, I'm told that in the code at 110 in the code video, which is a song on the Little Half Dead Dead Serious album, that uh, Little Half Dead mentions Tupac and then does the whole gun shooting thing right after. Anyway, more later. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 